Good morning, good morning. <laughs> hey, Quentin, good morning. KJ Body Fitness, She Rock Success. Sade, beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome to Motivation Monday. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Let me see. Here we go. You know, this is a great start of a new month. Excited about this new month. And one of the great things about a new month is that you can have some new thoughts. You can do some new things. You can meet some new people. So this month, as we're closing out the year, this month is a, a, a month to run flat out, to do everything you can to become the person you want, things you want to do. And so what we're going to be going to be doing over the next few days, we're going to take some places, some, hmm, that coffee was a bit strong. We're going to take some topics from the 12 Universal Laws of Success and cover them sequentially to give us the tools to close the year out and to operate most efficiently. So anyone who'd like to share and be interviewed as a part of this or be a part of this uh, this live Instagram, direct message me, DM me and let us set up something because I'd love to have you join in on the, uh, on the broadcast. So we're going to be starting really that first law of success. As we look around the world today, everything begins in thought. I'm going to say that again. Everything begins in thought. Earl Nightingale said something very powerful. He said, you become what you think about most of the time. And so if we look at our lives right now, where we are right now and the condition we're in right now, we are living the product of our thoughts. Now, sometimes it's hard to accept that because we may be having <laughs> I don't like uh, an out of body experience. <laughs> we may be experiencing things that we don't want. You know, you may have more very white Jesus. Hey, hey, my friend. Wow, Barry White has a program in Detroit. Enjoyed your program. Thanks for joining us today. And Papa, thanks for joining us. All right, Sherry Amore, thank you for joining us. So, so this idea, this thought. Of the, this idea, the law of thought. If you can control your thoughts, you can control everything. So, from chapter one of the 12 of success, I'm going to read a little bit because those of you who have the book, you can read along with me. Those of you who don't have it, go to our website, herbertharris.com, and get it. The first law of success is the law of thought and manifestation. And the reason we say that is. Every thought has a vibration associated with it. And that vibration is internalized through your feelings. And so based on what you think and what you feel, your life manifests. Thoughts become things, results, in accord with the nature and feeling of the thought. More personally, your thoughts manifest in your life experience in accord with the emotions and feelings you associate with your thoughts. In Proverbs, it says, for as the Proverbs says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, I like to make it more universal. For as they think it in their heart, so are they. To think in your heart means that you really feel inside, feel something about that particular thought. Which emotions or feelings are associated with the thought? So let's give an example. Most of us would like to be wealthy. Most of us would like to be happy. Most of us would like to attract things into our lives that complement what we want. <laughs> you know, whatever our dreams, our goals are, we would like to attract those things into our life. Those things that we desire begin with our thoughts. And the feelings associated with the thought. So some people talk success, but walk failure. We call it talk in the path, but walk in the grass. Example, when you talk about success, I'm a network marketer. 
And so there are people who desire to create wealth through network marketing. And so you say, well, hey, this is an incredible opportunity. Many people have made tons of money doing this thing. Why don't you come on out on Saturday morning? We have a meeting going on. You learn more about it. Oh, Amen. 10 o'clock, that's too early. So think about this. This is a person who had the thought of success, the thought of creating wealth, but inside their feeling nature was, I don't feel like getting up. Okay. I am not willing to compel myself to get up and go meet that, that opportunity. Many times, even in our talk, we'll, we'll say we desire happiness and wealth, but then our feeling nature can undermine that. You see, every thought has two aspects. The rational aspect, in other words, wealth, that's a thought. And then the feeling aspect, I deserve wealth. Your life manifests when the thought and the feeling coincide. You see, what you recognize in your thinking you energize in your feelings. What you energize in your feelings, you manifest in your life experience. And so if you're talking and thinking well, but inside feeling that you're not worthy of the wealth. Now, how, does, how, does, how, how do you do that? You know, nobody wakes up and says, I'm not worthy of being wealthy. I want to stay broke the rest of my life. But what happens is you have a thought and then inside that feeling may be, I don't deserve wealth. I'm not worthy of wealth. Many times we, we may have been raised in an environment of criticism where people are constantly criticizing you, telling you what you don't have and what you can't be. So if that feeling nature is inside you, I don't have the ability to do things. I, I, I'm not smart. I'm insecure about my thinking. So when you have the thought of wealth processed through the feeling of insecurity, the end result is you don't get wealth. You literally undermine the very thing you say that you desire. And so this law of thought is critical to have your thoughts and your emotions on one accord. So when you say, I want to be, I am wealthy, let's don't even do the want to be. We're gonna, that's a whole nother lesson. I am is the making power, the, the, the ability to create the vibration within you of you at that particular moment. So when you say, I'm going to be wealthy, that's a vibration for another time. To get the impact of the vibration of your thought, I am wealthy. So those of you who are listening today on, on Instagram, those of you who are listening and, and watching on, on YouTube, write in the chat, I am wealthy. I am wealthy. And when you write that, feel wealthy. Feel how your life would be if you were wealthy. Feel the joy of having money to meet every bill. Feel the joy of having your kids go to the school you want them to go to. Feel the joy of living in the home of your desires. I am wealthy. Thank you, Quentin. Thank you. Quentin is, I am wealthy. Sade, she said, I capitalize, I am. Let me tell you something, folks. If there's nothing you take away from today's message, you stand in front of your mirror and you say, I am to all the things you want to be. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am beautiful. I am powerful. I am loving. Sherry, thank you. I am wealthy. So whatever you put after I am is the way to program your thoughts to create the person you want to be. And the thoughts then create the, the, the manifestation that you live in your life. There are three primary areas of thoughts that really impact our lives. The thoughts we have about ourselves. We call it your self-image. And your self-esteem, the thoughts you have about yourself, and the, the other side of that coin is the self-esteem, the feelings you have about yourself. Queen, I am wealthy. Welcome, Lynette. Thank you. And so 
the thoughts you have about yourself are critical and they are modified with the feelings you have about yourself. So self-image and self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. The second class of thoughts are the thoughts you have about other people. Mm -hmm. And that's often reflected in your attitude. That's often reflected in your ability to, co to communicate with other people. The thoughts you have about other people are very profound because the thoughts you have out about other people give you the ability to connect with them in a powerful way. We often talk about the, the mastermind principle. Yes, I am healthy. Yes, Lynette, I am healthy. Yes. And the mastermind principle says, when two or more gathered on one accord, I am among them. And once again, I am is the making power, but now it's a making power that's modified by two different vibrations or three different vibrations or a thousand different vibrations. When we look at how movements happen in the country and in a world, you have a lot of people focused on one thought. And they internalize that thought by how they feel about it. And that transforms the world. You look at a person like Gandhi or Mandela, people who held a single thought and a single vibration within them. And that thought was so powerful that changed the world. Gandhi once said, once you focus on something that you want to be, do, and have, the first, the world laughs at you. <laughs> He's going to free his people. Ha <laughs> ha, bad chance. Then the world fights you. We can't let him free his people. And then you win. And so that's the way it is in life. You have that thought. You have that feeling. And it's modified and multiplied by the people you deal with through your attitude. And you become unstoppable. The third type of thoughts you have are your outlook, your mindset, your outlook on life, your frame of reference. Now, this is very powerful because we always hear that, uh, what's it, that quote? It says, do you see the glass as half full or half empty? That is an outlook perspective. That is a world perspective. So if you see the glass as half full, then the perspective is more is coming. Oh, my glass is half full. I'll have some more. But if you see the glass is half empty, then the mindset says it's all gone. There's no more coming. And even this will be gone and short of it. So you see how this works? You have this power now to control your thinking and your emotions to become magnetic to attract that that you want into your life. So let's look a little bit today. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look a little bit today. This is part one at self image. Because your self image is the starting point of your life experience. Your self image, I'll read a little bit from the book. How you see yourself in your own eyes determines what you get out of life. That's a bold statement, folks. But that's a statement that gives you power. Because you choose now how you see yourself. Self-image is your own conception of yourself. It is the mental and emotional picture you hold in your own consciousness of who you are, what you are about, and what you represent. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Queen. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you so much. Powerful words, Queen, thank you. Your self-image is important because it is the starting point of your life experiences. Your self-image the image you hold of yourself is like a great vase, a vase, as they say, into which all of your life experiences are poured. And so this self-image today, 
The lesson is to see yourself in your words, in your thoughts, and in your feelings the way you want it to be. That's why affirmations are so powerful. Because when you affirm it, I am wealthy. I am healthy. When you affirm that, that's the thought. When you now feel it, feel healthy. You know, we can, we can program every cell in our bodies by telling it to be healed, by telling it to be whole, by telling it to be healthy. And then doubt not. You know, there's that uh, scriptural principle that says, um, if you tell this mountain to be cast into the sea and doubt not, it's going to happen. That that you say will happen if you doubt not. And so this lesson today on the law of thought is how the thought and the vibration, the feeling work together. So when you have a thought of wealth and then you doubt your ability to attract it, you've undermined it. It's not going to happen. When you have the thought of joy and happiness and you undermine it with the thought that you don't deserve it. You know, we can be captive to past experiences. We can be captive to past hurts. We can be so captive to past hurts that any thought that we have is always interpreted through those past hurts. And so we say, I am wealthy. But inside you remember the pain of a failed relationship. You remember the embarrassment of losing. You know, <laughs> in politics, there's nothing worse than a victory party for which there is no victory. <laughs> you know, I've represented and run political campaigns, and one of the worst feelings is when you have you're anticipating success and you have this great victory party plan planned, and your candidate loses. Whew. That is a party you do not would not want to attend. But that's the way it is on a personal level. When you create your, very, your vision, your thought of victory, you must support that thought by feelings of worthiness. So today, the thoughts that you have, this day, write the thoughts that you desire to manifest in your life. The thought of wealth the thought of health, the thought of happiness, the thought of joy, the thought of abundance. Health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. When you can hold those thoughts in your head, the law of thought says, hold it in your head and feel it in your heart. Feel wealthy, feel joyful, feel happy. When you can do that, you put the law of attraction to work for you. Woo, folks. Kenya, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Kenya says you can have it all. Absolutely, folks. You can have it all. When your thoughts and your feelings are on one accord, the law of thought, the reason it's the first law is because it is the law of which everything else is built. Tomorrow, we're going to look at some other aspects of the thought. Tomorrow, we're going to look at, since everything is interpreted through your self-image, we're going to look at this, how to transform your self-image into a self-image that works for you. Those of you, Kenya, Queen, those of you, I want to, you know, let's do some two-way and three-way stuff as we talk about this law over these next few days, these next few really the next few weeks and uh, direct message me because I'd like to pull you in. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to pull you in and share some insight, maybe have you read from the book too. So direct message me so we can start the process of connecting. Sade, I'll reach out to you and good things will happen. So let me close today's broadcast saying that you can be whatever you want to be, that you can do whatever you want to do, that you can have anything you desire if you can hold that thought in your mind and let it manifest 
in your life. Kenya, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Kenya, would you like to join in the broadcast? <laughs> I'd love to hear your words, man. If you'd love to join in, just let me know. <laughs> All right, folks. Whatever you do, make it a great day. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. Okay, Kenya, let me send you an invite. Oh, this is going to be great. Let's see. Uh, all right, let me send this to you. Here we go. Okay. Okay, beautiful. Let's see. Thank you so much. Let's see, Kenya, can you join us? There we go. <laughs> all right man how are you oh man i just love watching your videos I sure appreciate that coming from you. I, I watch your videos and I watch you transform people's bodies and transform their minds. Yes, sir. That's the, that's the whole thing. Uh, one of the things I love to say is I'm going to change your mind and I'm going to change your behind because it's one day to day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Reverend Ike used to say, he, he used to say, follow where your mind goes, your behind will follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now can you when you're working with a person, because I see some people that you take for and they lose 50, 60, 100 pounds, man, like just almost not overnight, but with consistency. How do you use that, that mental aspect? How how do you use that that thought process to help them? It's about setting the standard with them early. So one of the things I always ask is, how much do you want to lose? And then they'll be like, well, realistically? And I'm like, no, uh, we're not working off of being realistic. We're working off of your imagination. So whatever you think you can do, you can do. So I need you to travel outside of yourself. And uh, just remember that, you know, God created heavens and earth in seven days. So why can't you lose 50 pounds? Why can't you lose six? Pounds. Why can't you lose 100 pounds? Sometimes you got to walk and operate in your authority. And sometimes you got to speak to yourself. Sometimes you got to speak to your mountain and just be like, look, I've been this way for this long. Now it's time to change. And it can happen instantly. Wow. If you just believe and you just show up every day. Wow. That's heavy. See, now you, you're just taking this whole personal development, this whole uh, fitness training You've taken it to a whole nother level. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's, that's the intention. Mm -hmm. To just, just keep all of us just full. And I talk about that all the time. I'm like, you know what? You you deserve to have the relationship. You deserve to have the mud. Mm -hmm. You deserve to have the peace. You, des you deserve to have the joy. You deserve to have the body that you desire. Because, again, the only person who has been given authority to stop you is you. Woo. Woo. Now you just, you just, they say, drop the mic in church. They say, take up a collection. <laughs> but it's so true. Uh, you know, it even says in the good book, I, I've given you the authority and dominion over all things. Wow. But if we don't exercise our authority, we might as well not even have it. So when you exercise your authority, not only can you exercise your authority on other people but you can exercise your authority on yourself now that, and that's the key right there that's the key right there because if you do, if you can't control yourself your thinking and your emotions it's not going to happen yeah yeah that's true and i've been working on that with with myself mm -hmm. just checking myself and, and 
understanding myself and understanding how I react sometimes whenever something hits me. One of the things that I'm really working on is not making a move until mm. until this little feeling subsides. Because I I know me, I'll make a bad choice based upon a na- based upon a now feeling. Mm. So one of the things that I'm really working on is just being in control of my feelings, being in control of my emotions, and not letting my emotions lead me. Woo. Brother, brother, that's the key right there, because your emotions, you know, your emotions are almost like a lot like your, your instincts. You know, when we talk about the stages of life, your emotions, that emotion of sensation, that emotion, I want to feel this, I want to uh, drugs and alcohol and, and, and relationships, your emotions will pull you along and you have to master and control them. That's heavy. Mm. Yes. And, and, and really, not only am I working on that within myself, but working on my, my people, working on my bricks, that, mm-hmm. as I affectionately call them, we're really working on just being the ultimate versions of ourselves and not just being satisfied with where we are. And that requires us uh, to reflect mm. upon some things that we might not want to look at. It requires us to be account- accountable to ourselves, not to other people, but to be accountable to ourselves. Because at the end of the day, no matter where we are in life, it's always us. We're, we're always going to be there. Mm. Wow. I meet no one but me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Man, yeah. Where I, look, how does the saying go? Where, where, wherever I am, it sounds like I, I'm messing it up. But no matter where I'm at, I'm still here. That's it. Well, I like to say you always bring yourself to the party. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. I used to, I used to date this lady back in the day, mm-hmm. and she was just like, "Well, maybe if I just move to Florida, you know, maybe things will change." Mm-hmm. I'm like, but you're taking you with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's it. Not, it's not the environment. It's not the city. It's not the state. It's not the people. It's you. And until you can identify that you're the problem and you're also the, the solution, until you can understand that, you'll always be in the same spot. Wow. Wow. You know that. And, and it's all about that mindset. That man, because you always bring your mindset, and that's the collection of your values, of your emotions, of your thoughts. You always bring your mindset to the party. Wow. Right. Mm. Right. And uh, my wife told me out last week because I had a situation. Uh-huh. And um, one of the things that she said that I that stuck with me last week when I was just going through some stuff, she was like, anytime you get that thought of negativity, just redirect it to somewhere else. Mm. Okay. Redirect your thought. Mm-hmm. So it's like anytime you feel a negative thought coming on, sometimes you got to check that thought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And kind of like what you talk about with the weeds. Yes. Sometimes you got to you got to just take pull the weeds out. You got to pull the weeds out. That's it. You know, there's a powerful word we often use called "that's not for me." And so whenever that negative stuff comes at you, negative people, you say, sometimes you just say it out loud. You know, when people start to bring gossip, you say, well, that's not for me. <laughs> OK. And sometimes you you can't say it out loud. You just have to sort of look at them and go. <laughs> and that, that's not for me because we have that power, man, to shut that stuff out. You know, being a, a personal trainer, you get to see the manifestation of the thought in the physical form. I I can imagine you get a joy when you see a person who comes to you 100 pounds overweight and over a period when you see them not only sculpt the new body, but live the new mindset. What does that feel like? It's really really a joy, and I'll tell you why. It's one of those things that you can see. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to church, and you say, I'm saved. I got saved today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless you told me that, I wouldn't know that. 
Mm. But in physical fitness, yeah. weight loss and transformation, you can see it. Yes. You can see a person change. Mm. You can see a person going from a size 22 to a size 12. Mm. You can see a person's demeanor shift. You can physically see that stuff. So that, that's why it's so powerful. And that's why I'm so, so blessed to be doing what I'm doing because I can see physical manifestation in this quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't take all day. Woo! Can you? I'm telling you something, folks. You're just hearing from the master trainer. <laughs> you know, you're like Michelangelo. You know, they say Michelangelo once said, he said he when he was talking about the, the stone David, he said, I had a block of stone and I carved it to set David free. <laughs> And that's what you do, man. A person comes to you with a certain physical appearance and a certain mindset, and you call them to yes. set them free. Yes. One of my favorite verses is, uh, speak for those things that be not as though they were. Mm. So that's what I try to get them to do. You might not see it, but one of, one of the things that I'm gifted with is being able to not see where you are currently, but I can actually see how I'm going to make you. I see the end result, but my job is to get you to see it also. So I, one of the things that we do on, on the private pages, I'll ask, okay, tell me Monday's affirmations because I need for you to start talking better to yourself. Mm. And when you think better and you talk better, your life looks better. Wow. When you think better and you talk better, your life looks better. Ooh, okay. All right. That's powerful, brother. Kenya, I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya Crooks. Kenya, what's your website, man? So the people, I know somebody said, let me let me call this man up because I need help. <laughs> uh, you can go to kenyacrooksnetwork.com. Uh, you can also check me out on the Kenya Crooks, which is, which is my uh, Instagram handle. <laughs> so y'all yeah, can just hit me up. I look forward to hearing from everybody. And again, thank you, Doc, for having me on. Thank you, Kenya. It's my pleasure, man. And, and you know something? You, when you just said something, I was speaking to the church last week about on the prodigal son. And when he was in the pig pen of life, and he's there feeding the pigs and eating what the pigs left, okay? The thought came to me that the pigs looked up at him and said, you don't belong here, <laughs> okay? And so in many instances, you can look at a person and say, this is not you. There's right. another you, just like Michelangelo. This piece of stone is not what you were destined to be. You were destined to be David. You were destined to be a beautiful sculptor. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> your permanent position so it's like you might be here right now but this is not the end game this is not the end goal that you you might be where you are right now but there's so much greater for you so i need for you to not look at where you are but i need for you to look at your permanent position i don't need for you to look at your now i need for you to go after your why go from your now to your why yeah, that you want it. Wow. Thank you, Kenya. Everybody, thank you. What a great, magnificent morning. You have made Motivation Monday a true Motivation Monday. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you. Everybody, have a great day. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. <laughs> Let's bring it on, folks. All right, we're closing out with a little music. <laughs> Be sure to share this broadcast and listen to it over and over because I guarantee you will find a diamond, a jewel that can help you be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have whatever you want to have, always knowing that the best